hello uh, this video I'm going to explain you AODV ad hoc on demand distance vector routing protocol so this routing protocol falls under reactive routing protocol which means uh, whenever any node wants to send some data to another node at that time they will start searching for the path uh, in, so before if they don't want to send any data they won't uh, go for any route searching so at the time of when it's needed at that time they um, start looking for is there any what is the feasible path so AODV is the reactive routing protocol uh, AODV uh, we can say this is an extension of DSR dynamic source routing uh, before going for AODV, just have a look on uh, DSR disadvantage. So, in case of dynamic source routing, whenever a node finds out uh, a route to the destination, the path will be included in the data itself. The data packet carries the entire route. So, for example, say if our network is not large, so path will be small. But if our network size will grow, so in that case the bytes required to store path in data packet will also increase so most of the time in this case uh, network bandwidth will be not used not utilized fully because most of the time most of the bandwidth is used to send path across the nodes so this was the first disadvantage the second one in DSR for one destination there are multiple route possible one node can cache multiple route for the same destination so in AODV uh, AODV reactive routing protocol well, <coughs> the route discovery mechanism is similar as we are having in dynamic source routing so this uh, in order to discover a route first it will send a route request packet when the destination receives that packet they will reply by sending route reply pack packet. We will see this example in uh, later slide. Now, in AODV maintain all the route in the form of table. Where in DSR tables are not used, but here we are using table. AODV routing protocol store all their path in the form of table. Now. Uh, when we uh, uh, when any entry is made in table one timer also associated with that tables that timer will explain sorry that timer will specify at what time that entry should be removed from the entry uh, sorry from the table and the third one is the destination sequence number uh, destination sequence number it can be considered like a timestamp so that's a at what time we have received this path information from the destination so in case of if the information is old uh, the information is not fresh the information is stale in that case the destination sequence number can be used to check whether that coming information is fresh or not so inclusion of dash this sequence number also avoid routing loop account to infinity problem so let's take a example we are having four nodes a c d e our objective a wants to send data to e so initially node a is not having any information that where is that node d is node e exist in the network so a will start a route discovery mechanism so <coughs> they will send the sorry they will broadcast the route request packet so in route request packet uh, all entries are same as we are having in DSR but there are uh, some changes so first one every node maintain two counter one is sequence number so the sequence number will work as a timestamp and second one is the broadcast ID whenever any node send a route request packet that packet carries a unique ID so that broadcast ID every node maintain whenever they send route request packet they increase this ID so next time when they will send route request packet that will be having a another ID and this is the 
packet format for route request uh, in AODV. So first entry is the source address. Second one is the source sequence number. So when source will generate this packet at the time they will include their sequence timer information their sequence timer uh, current value and this is the broadcast id this is we can consider it's a unique id for route request packet and then this is the destination address destination sequence numbers if sender is not having any idea about destination so in that case this entry will be empty and the last one is the hope count how many hope it required to send the data from sender to receiver so when destination receive route request it will check the destination address and it will find out that this route discovery process is for uh, uh, its own so in that case destination will reply by using route reply packets so the format is source address destination address destination sequence number so now when destination will send this packet they include their timestamp hope count and this is the lifetime this will specify for how long this uh, uh, entry this path can be used uh, intermediate node so intermediate node whenever they hear duplicate packet they will discard it now in case if a sender is requesting for a route they will broadcasting the route request packet in case if intermediate node having any updated information so in, uh, instead of broadcasting route request packet they will send a reply to the sender so now let's continue our example so a wants to send some data to e so a has to start route discovery process so under this process a needs to transmit route request packet so that packet we are considering here so first one source address source sequence number this is the destination sequence it's sorry this is the destination address destination sequence number this is the hope count and this third unit is the broadcast id so we are assuming all these value from the initially these are value this node is having initially this hope count zero this hope count actually signify the distance from the sender so initially we are at node a so distance between a to a is zero so now a will broadcast this packet so these are the meaning of these uh, entry so a will send a will broadcast this packet a is having only one neighbor so this packet will be sent to c now c is not having any information about node e so c will broadcast this packet again now before broadcasting this packet c will update this hope count because this hope count is the distance between current node and the sender so now the current node is c then the distance between a and c is 1 so now c will update this packet so every node maintain this information in the table so these table we are considering only some few uh, column here destination next hope sequence number hope count and lifetime <coughs> so when c will receive this packet c would know uh, this packet is actually coming from a and this packet came on this interface okay this is connected they are using this interface it is connected to a so it, it would know this packet is coming from a so it will create an entry in the routing table what is the entry uh, if uh, any packet coming to c for destination a c will C so should transmit that packet in this direction so it will create this entry in the routing table so this is also known as we are uh, uh, keeping a backtrack for the senders so this red line this red arrow is showing actually C is keeping this information that A is reachable using this path now C <coughs> increase the hope count and broadcast this packet again 
D will check that uh, the destination is E so D also broadcast this packet and uh, before that D also make a entry D will make if this packet is coming from A from this side so it would know in order to reach to destination A we have to go to C and from here from the hope count it will get the hope count information so this will be the current situation now D will send this packet to E now E will check this, this route re request packet is actually for him so now E will prepare a route reply packet and before that E will also create a entry in the routing table so these re red a arrow they are actually keeping uh, track for sender a how to reach a so e has prepared a route reply packet sender receiver destination sequence number hope count so again hope count is the distance from sender so currently we are on e so the distance from e to e is zero e will send this value to d so now d would know this packet is coming uh, from sender E from this side so D would know in order to reach E I have to go to here so it will create an entry in the routing table and this entry will say in order to reach E uh, forward the packet to E Hope count is 1 and this is the sequence number this is the timestamp at what time uh, destination E has generated route reply packet now D will increase the hope count value and send this to C. C also make an entry that <coughs> C will see this packet is coming from E and this packet is coming from D. So it would know in order to reach E we have to go to D. So it will create an entry. In order to reach E we have to forward our packet to D. It will take two hope count and sequence number is 120. And finally this packet will be sent to E. A create this entry so now every node has updated their routing table and they are all having the information for node E so now whenever A, A now A will send its data and the data is not carrying the path information data is not carrying any route because every node having their own table so whenever they receive any data packet they consult their routing table on the basis of that routing table they, they forward their that received data packet to other nodes okay thank you